Welcome everybody. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can actually write less code. It is nothing to do with writing any gimmicky code by reducing some while loops with link statements, nothing like that. It is about making correct design choices before building the system. If you watched my design better systems video, it's going to be of the similar sort. Before we dive into the example, you need to understand how you can actually arrive at a point where you can design such a system. For this, the example that we're going to be dissecting is a form builder. As a developer, you are going to build a front end, you're going to build a back end, and you're going to be transferring some data from the front end into your database. Sometimes it's a simple proxy, sometimes you need to hook in some processes. It is your job to identify what kind of data you're capturing, what kind of data you're storing, etc., and then building abstractions on top of that. The crucial giveaway for actually being able to design and build a form builder is being able to understand that the business side is always going to come to you repeatedly asking for forms that they can fill out, capture data, and then perhaps do something with them on the other side. What you don't want to do is be stuck there in front of the computer for the rest of your life, building out these additional forms, right? That is going to get very, very boring. You want to build a tool that is going to allow these people who actually need the forms, they need the forms. So give them a tool so they can build it. Don't be a form factory. You want to find repetition, not in your code, but in the work that you're doing and then step away and build a tool that is going to eliminate that repetition in your work, which you can then hand over to the users. My name is Anton. Welcome to the Rock Coding YouTube channel. As always, if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start off with the database and the data that we're storing. So if you're a developer and you're building forms, the main repetition is going to be what kind of fields or attributes can a form contain. And those fields and attributes are going to have their own type. So we define an input type so it can either be a text or a number or a selection. And then you want to capture that form field in some kind of specification. Because we're going to be storing it in a database, we're going to need an ID, a label, hints of, for example, if you're filling out name, you may give an example of Bob, and then what kind of input type is it? There is also, and the most important bit, is the metadata. Let's say if we have an input type like text or number, there could be no metadata. If there is an input type like selection, there are options in that selection menu that you have. Metadata in this scenario is essentially the variance between the individual input fields. And that variance is going to be dynamic. One of the things that stops people from creating systems like this is classes. Generally, you cannot have this crazy class hierarchy or this generic structure and then also map it to the database. You need this dynamic layer of metadata where you're saying overall, there may be different things there. I only need to know what's in there when I'm trying to use it. So we then continue to defining a form specification. So you want to capture some kind of form and it's going to consist of the following fields. Map all of this stuff to the database. And here I go to create a selection metadata class, which I don't really end up using. But this is how you can take the metadata and convert it to this type, which will allow you to work with this specific field specification and do something with it if you want it. I'm making sure that none of the lists are going to be empty and moving over to creating the endpoints. The first endpoint is for creating a form specification. I like to create my handlers in individual files and then just map the functions. Here I'm planning on posting the full form spec to the endpoint and just saving it into the database. So a simple CRUD endpoint. I then create an endpoint where I can just list these specifications so my front end can actually process them. Once I create a form specification, I should be able to render it and then fill it out and submit it. When a form is submitted, it's going to be a form submission. And again, the type of form that I'm going to try to submit is going to vary. I don't know exactly what the shape of the form is going to look like. I may have optional fields. I may not. So the payload that I'm actually storing is a string. It's dynamic. It's going to be JSON. And also just in case the form submission refers back to the form spec that was used to create it, we then run the migrations and update the database and run the backend as well as start the front end. At this point, my backend is ready to accept form specifications. So I will need some kind of UI for actually creating these form specifications and registering them with the database. 
set up a new view for creating the form and registering it with the router so I can actually reach the page. Nothing too interesting going on here. We define the form to hold the form specification, having things like name and then fields and defining all the basic fields. So to actually capture the name and then a for loop for being able to add or remove fields. I actually have the functionality for removing fields. So just an add field function, which is going to push a field specification into the fields array. Also define input types, which is going to mimic the input types on the back end, allow the selection of the input type, the label, the hint, and now the most interesting bit, the metadata input. The metadata input component itself is going to be dynamic and its behavior is going to change depending on what input type we give it. If the input type is text or number, there is no metadata that we could potentially configure. On the other hand, if you have a selection field, you can configure which options you want to select. So you can see a computer component property, which is going to evaluate to none if the input type that we're given is zero or one, or we're going to evaluate it to a select component if the input type is two. Now note, instead of the if statement, you can use a table. That's a minor implementation detail. We'll also handle the condition in case the input type though is supplied is somehow invalid. The metadata is then going to be passed down to the individual component to be, well, handled. You can see that the selection component still receives metadata as a string and only parses it at the point of receiving it. This is not me following some kind of rule. This is just me choosing a point where the metadata is going to actually gain functionality, where it actually makes sense to treat that meta as not just a blob of some data, but rather an actual functional thing. The selection component gives that metadata meaning. And then every time our options change, we emit the JSON back. There is actually no need for the externals to ever know what this metadata is. It only makes sense to unpack it at the points where it's actually being used. We then propagate the change in the metadata value all the way up the chain back to the create form view controller through the metadata input. We also set the input type on the metadata input. So first of all, we can select what kind of input type we want and then the metadata input renders the appropriate component. Whenever the metadata is updated, we just save it onto the field. Whenever I'm developing using SPA frameworks, I like to place these debug views, which just let me inspect all of the data at once. We'll then take the form spec route and bind a link to it so it's easier to reach. Open up the browser, create form spec page and try to add a field and we get an error. The error was inside the selection component because the metadata was empty from the beginning. So by default, I changed it to select text components. And if the metadata is empty, give it an empty array. I then noticed my endpoints are not bound to slash API. So I create an endpoint group for it. After that's done, we give the form another test. Adding fields works. The main thing that I notice is that the input type, which is assigned is actually a string and not a number. So the correct metadata input component is not being resolved. I fix the issue by binding numbers to the values of the options or the input selection and actually use the value from the input type enums. This time testing the form goes straight to the selection to make sure the error is resolved and it looks like there is a binding error. Inside the metadata input, I'm actually passing the metadata through a value prop rather than a metadata prop. Again, giving it a test, input type selection, adding some options. That looks to be working, so I'm ready to actually submit this form specification to the backend. So we add a submit function with a create form spec button, which is going to submit the data to the backend. Pull out a quick test form to make sure that the submission is actually working and surprise it's not. We get a 415 unsupported media type and it looks like I'm not actually serializing my object. So I'm going to call json.stringify before making the call. I still get the same error. So I'm thinking it's because I'm missing the identifiers because of the form spec. So I add on the identifiers. I still get the same error after which I realize I'm actually posting JSON. So I need to specify the appropriate content type in the headers. Again, testing the fix and setting application slash JSON to content type has actually worked. After I set up the home view, which is just going to fetch all of the specs from the backend and then render them as links, where the link name is going to be the name of the form specification. 
we add the home view to the main router link so we can actually reach it and then set the ID in the URL so we can actually fetch the individual specification once we land on the form submission page. Taking a look if the home view works at all, looks like it didn't. Quickly adding the home title to the component, the page still didn't work, which basically means the component is failing to load. The root of the issue that I found was the await keyword. So instead I opted in for promises and holding all of the specifications inside the state object. The home page is now working, but there is no links. I just need to grab the specs from the state and the links render without any problems. Being able to create form specifications and navigate to them, I create a form specification which is meant to test all three fields. The form now saved in the back end. I noticed that on the home view, we don't actually have the fields included with the specification. So I amend the endpoint to also include the fields and work towards creating an endpoint for fetching an individual specification. So I can actually receive that information when I follow a link to filling out the form. I then copy most of the code for loading the specification from the home view into the form view. Set the logic for only rendering the form if we have managed to fetch the spec and work towards fetching that individual spec by retrieving the ID from the route and attaching it to the call. I then create a specialized directory for enums and with an enums files to which I extract the input types so I can share them amongst all of the components. I then set up a render field component, which is going to be very similar to the metadata input component. However, its responsibility is going to render each individual field on the form because all of the fields are going to be different. It is going to look at the field that it's receiving and then produce the appropriate sub component. For each field inside the specification, we want to create a render field component. When the user inputs data into the field, we want to take that value and store it back inside the form. And now comes the second most interesting part where we are going to have a fields directory with each individual implementation of the render field component. Hopefully you can see how instead of going around and creating these forms, instead what you do now is you create a component for configuring a specific input type and then a component for being able to accept input for that input type. And then again, depending on the input type, you may need to have a component which is going to render it. Otherwise, a form is just a key value pair collection. Your users no longer come to you with requests of I want X form or I want Y form. They say, I want to be able to put this and that on my form and you provide them with that capability. This is object oriented programming. You're thinking about the individual fields, which are object and how to compose them into this form. You're not thinking about creating a class for another form and then another repository, how to save that form, another table, none of that mess. Building systems like these makes you data oriented and object oriented at runtime. So we create a fields folder, which is going to contain all of the components, which will render individual parts of the form, starting off with just a text field. The render field component is going to receive the field specification as a parameter and then resolve one of the field components based on the input type that is contained within the spec. The render field components also wants to emit updates whenever we are going to be inputting value into one of the subcomponents. The text field component is super simple. It is just an input and it is going to emit updated events when data is inputted into it. We also then pass the spec down to the text field so we can render things like label and hint as well as metadata. With the text field ready to be used, we bring in another debug view so we can actually see what data we have when we're inputting data. Taking a look at how the form renders, I see an undefined error, which basically means I don't have the spec in my component. So it's just a matter of binding spec inside render field. Back in the browser, I can see the text field, but the form is undefined. So I decide to print out the whole spec. I also realize if fields have labels, not names. Hence the reason the form was empty. The initial values are null as well. So I'm going to let the individual components define the default value by emitting it right at the beginning. So the text field component is just going to emit an empty string. I take the opportunity at this point to just quickly create a number field component as well and let that emit a zero. Change a couple of attributes, register the number field with the render field component. I also remembered how to create tables in JavaScript, so that is fun. And I copy pasta the text field component again to create a select field component. I'm going to do the same thing with metadata from the beginning, parse it, emit the first value and then bind the options and fix up the attributes. Register the select field with the render field component. As I'm checking the form, I can see that there is no reactivity and the default values are not there. First, I suspect the form, so I add the default initialization in the state. I also realize I'm using the spec name or the form key. And again, we have label and I also misspell update 
Fixing all of these little issues gave me a reactive form that is dynamically rendered based on the data retrieved from the backend. I quickly clean up select field and go back to the form view to implement logic of submitting the form to the backend. Started creating the submit form function, realized I needed a backend, so I create a submit form class with a handler. Now this one is going to be a little bit special because the form that we're posting is going to be dynamic. So all I want to do is bring up a stream reader, put the body in there and then read it in as a string. If the form is empty, fail validation, also attach a spec ID to the handler. And then finally take the form and the spec ID, attach it to a form submission and save it to the database, returning OK. With the endpoint now in place, all that's left is to finish off the fetch request, so define the method post, attach the form to the body after stringifying it, hook up the function and submit the form. With the form submitted, I go back to the home view and implement a fetch for fetching forms. Obviously, I'm missing the endpoint, so I have to go to the backend and actually implement the fetch. Add some very basic HTML for printing out the submissions. Even though I'm fetching the data, the browser doesn't display anything, so I realize the fetch is binding the forms to the incorrect property of the state. I then go to test the submission of another form. That is working as well. The final thing that I wanted to clean up is the numbers are being stored as strings, so I'm adding the parse int to the number field. And now everything looks to be working properly. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. A little bit of a different style in recording this please tell me what you think if you enjoyed it if you didn't like it please leave it in the comment section don't forget to like subscribe join the discord server man you know what to do and if you want the source code for this video as well as my other videos please come support me on my patreon i will really appreciate it and a big big thank you to all of my patreon supporters that are already choosing to support me all of you are awesome again thank you for watching and have a good day